In this video, I'm going to attempt to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to help with binomial probability experiments and binomial probability distributions. It may be a rather long video, but it will, at the end, put everything into one so you can complete all work and quizzes and just inserting some data and it pops right out for you. And it's interesting to see how it all works out. So let's get started. Here's the binomial probability experiment, and these are the parameters, N10, probability 3, 0.3, excuse me, and then we have x equals to 3 successes. So that shows the answer here. Let's go to my setup here. Now I have this setup for many things, just to get us started, so you don't have to watch me do them all, but we have our n, our probability, and then we want to find the exact number of successes. So what we're going to use is this information for right now. So the number of trials, if I look back again, was 10, the probability was 0.3, and we want three successes. So 10 trials, 0.3, and then we want three successes. Now that's going to be data you enter all the time. Those three things, basically. And this is going to be the probability. And the probability of that is this function here. So there are a few ways of getting this number. One is to actually enter this formula right here. And we're going to do that for this one. Another way is to use Excel to automatically enter the information. But let's do it using this formula first. So equal, we have the combinatorics function. So that's what this is. So it's combin. And then what it's going to take is the n value first, which is the number of trials. So we have to highlight that box there. Then I'm going to put, put comma. And then it says we need the number chosen. Well, that's going to be the x values, the number of successes. So there's the combination, combinatorial. Then we're going to multiply times the probability which is here, raised to the number of successes there are. Then we're going to multiply by 1 minus the probability. And that's going to be raised to n minus x. So I'm going to put that in a parentheses. n, which would be the number of trials, minus x number of successes. All right. Once we have all that all in, you hit return, and there's our probability, 0.2668. So let's look at to see what that is, 0.2668. So there's the probability of three successes after 10 trials with a probability of 0.3. So that's how you can do it with this formula for any of them. And now if we want to change any of this information, find the exact number of four successes, all I have to do is change that three to a four and it will automatically update. Four. Five. One. No successes. Okay. So remember, 10 trials, probability, number of successes. And this gives that probability after you enter that information. So I just finished showing you how to get one probability of a number of successes. Now we're going to look at a whole bunch of successes and probability with cumulative probability and then the histogram. So let's look at this problem here. Here's a prob prob binomial probability experiment with the probability of x successes and n trials. So we have 13 trials, probability of 0.3, but we want to find out the number of successes of less than or equal to 4. Okay, so we have a probability of 0.3, we have our trials of 13, and here we'll change it to exactly 4. That's exactly 4, that's exactly 3, 2, 1, 0. So we could record all those, less than or equal to 4, right? And then add them up. But why not make this over here? Let's just continue this down here. I'll just drag. Oops. I'm going to have to drag. I'm going to have to right click and drag. 
Let's see, I think that will. And then I do uh, fill series. Okay, so if you right click and drag and fill series, it counts down for you. So we'll go down to 32. That's something to start with. All right, then we can figure out the probability. I can type this whole equation in again here and then make sure that my symbols point to the n and the x and that way with the, with the dollar sign or what we can do, use is a probability or a binomial probability function in Excel and that's what I'm going to use here. Okay, because then we can see 4, 3, 2, 1 and make cumulative probabilities for us to add them up. All right, let's do the first one. So how we can do this is we just go into formulas up here, more functions, statistical, and then binome dist. Now if you don't have that more functions area, you can actually just type equals binome dot dist like this. Just type this and then you'll type the values in independently rather than in this box. But let's enter them now. So here's the number of successes, the trials, and the probability. So I need to move this up a little bit. The number of successes are going to be here, that value. The number of trials are always going to be here. The probability is in this box. And do we want it to add them up, the cumulative? Do we want the successes to be added up for their probabilities, excuse me? And we don't, so we want to write false here. Okay, so this way it'll just give me the probability, and I click OK. And now let's check to make sure I have that right. The number of successes are 0, probability, yes, 0 0.0096, and look at that. This is the one with the formula here, and it's the same number. Now I just want to bring that down, but before I just grab it and drag it down, I need to remain, some of these boxes need to be re remained pointing at, right? The green box and the purple box we have to keep. The blue box we want to continue to move down as I go down. So the, the green box here, I need a dollar sign and a dollar sign on the C3 and C4 to keep these pointing at those two boxes. Okay, then I hit enter to get out of that. Now I'm able to drag it down. I can drag it down all the way to where I had 32. And what it's doing is, is calculating the probability of this many successes in 13 trials. You'll find that after 13 we have some problems, right? Because you can't have 14, tri 14 successes in 13 trials. So we're just going to ignore that data, but here's the data we, we, we want to look at. Okay, so we can test and make sure. Let's put up here and say four successes should be 0.233. Four successes, 0.233. Yep, it's working fine. And if you look at each any one of these and you click up here, you can see the blue box is here, and then the green and purple box are still pointing there. Hit enter to get out. All right, now we want cumulative probability because I want to know uh, less than or equal to four. So what this does is the same thing. I'm going to go into the formulas, more functions, statistical, and do that binomial distribution again. Same information in here, number of successes are going to be here, trials, probability, cumulative this time, true. And since I know I'm going to drag this down, remember that my trials in C3 here want to stay the same, dollar sign, and my C4 probability right here wants to stay the same, but we want my number of successes to move down, so I'm going to leave that. Then I hit enter. And you can see that my dollar sign is in there. You can enter it now or before like I just did. Now the cumulative probability adds them up. So with zero, it's just going to be the same. When I drag it down, it's going to add them up. And it should be equal to 1 when I get down to this point. So I'm just going to drag down all the way to 32. I have those problems again, but look, 1. That's because these are the all the probabilities here added up. This one plus this one is that one. This one plus this one plus this one is that one. And they equal 1, 100%. Now this is pretty easy then to see less than or equal to 4 because that would be this value right here. So I'll just highlight that. The probability of exactly 4 and the probability of less than or equal to 4 would be that, 0.6543. Go back to here, 0.6543 less than or equal to four successes. 
Now this is very helpful for finding a lot of different probabilities. One other example that you can find is we found that probability of less than or equal to four successes is here, but how do you find, say, the probability of greater than four successes? Well, if this is the probability of less than or equal to four successes, then the, remember the probability of, of having the cumulative probability of all the successes is one. So to be greater than four, basically we could take and say equals one minus to be less than or equal to four. So it would be a 0.345 chance that you're greater than four. So if you ever want to find out you're greater than, you use the one minus the less than or equal to. So that allows you to get some other successes as well rather than just always less than or equal to.